Hello everyone! It's the start of another week where I have nothing better to talk about, which means I'm going to go through a week's worth of news that I have not discussed before in a previous video, and we're just going to hit all the points so I can get my opinions out there. So welcome to another news roundup. Uh, probably, you know, going to be the last one for May, about to hit the middle of the year, and a lot of stuff about to hit. Uh, so, we're going to start with Clamp Down. So, uh, this... Uh, pfft, yeah, sorry. sorry. The, the link uh, erroneously named it as Countdown, uh, so I got thrown off there for a second. It's like, no, no, it's not a, mo it's not a, it's not a MicroMaster. No, no, it's 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 a Red Alert repaint. All right. So uh, if you've never heard of Clampdown, Clampdown gets kind of obscure. It is based on a Diaclone release of uh, Sideswipe in police style deco. And yeah, it looks fine. It, it looks very R.I.D. Prowl, doesn't it? Which is not a bad thing. So there is a little bit of discussion to have about this figure because it did change the color palette. Uh, uh, the uh, typical, like the G1 clampdown that we got, uh, the one that is like strictly just the Diaclone re-released, actually has red let uh, arms and thighs. So there is a bit of a discrepancy between this release and those. That said, I'm actually not entirely upset over that, not in the least. Aside from the fact Clampdown isn't exactly a character I am really attached to and really need like hardcore accuracy to. But also, look at look at Red Alert there. Look at Red Alert. If Clampdown had his accurate colors, those two would look so similar to each other. It would look even more similar if you had a toy accurate red alert with a black head rather than a red so anything that splits those two up i am perfectly comfortable with i would actually be i, I don't know i think i'd actually be happier if they went with a different shade is it really I, the only thing that bugs me about this is that it definitely does lack color he does have a very drab color scheme i could definitely use some some different color to the arms like uh i didn't even want to say blue because that's deep cover. <laughs> now we're getting into the other repaints if we do that. I don't know. It's it's a toss up here. Like they could have gone a few. There's a few different ways they could have gone. I I just I don't know. It just looks a little bit drab. And I don't like when repaints have like the same color helmet and all that because it just kind of looks like side swipes uh, moonlighting as a police car. <laughs> but no, it's not a it's not a bad deco. It gets yet another version of the side swipe character out there. Not. Uh, not really a bad thing if you are a collector. You know, it, it it more or less completes like this ongoing like Sentai team of side swipes that you can have created. I need a green side swipe now. Where's my green ranger side swipe? Uh, in another similar leak, we have Ransack showing up. It is a retool of Kickback, which a lot of people expected. And uh, remember that little like. Yeah, re remember how those added wing extensions could form, you know, this, you know, uh, thorax section? I'm probably not getting my insect terminology right as usual. But, yeah, it forms this midsection here to kind of separate it out from kickback and make it look more locust-like than grasshopper-like. The change in color palettes does not quite work on Ransack. The arms should be black. There is a little bit too much yellow going on here, and... Really, with the wing, with the wings on the shoulders, there really isn't any way for me, for my brain, to separate this from kickback. You know, the new head is fine, but let's get to a comparison shot here. The new head does have a fairly similar silhouette to the original. They both have the visor eyes. They both have the yellow antenna. They both have the overhang to their uh, to their helmets. It's not a terribly big difference. I really wish, since it's a completely different shade of plastic, which means it's on a different sprue, I really wish the chest had been redone. Give it a little bit more separation between the two. It just looks a little bit too similar for my taste. And, you know, like I said, the like that added, uh, like, like that, uh, like the forearm still being, you know, being changed to yellow, I do think is a detriment because I don't know in in beast mode especially I think there's just too much yellow going on compared to G1 ransack, but I don't know it looks okay like for what is you know pretty basic redo and pretty obvious one, yeah it's it's not 
it's not the worst. You know, I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm going for these. I'm not sure if I'm going for these because it's in another four pack, which the last four pack they released was impossible to find, and there was stuff in that one I actually wanted. No, uh, this is rumored to be in a four pack along with Toy Accurate, uh, Scorponok, and uh, what was the other one? Oh, the Wasp Manator Repaint Parasite. So it's gonna it's gonna be a really weird random. It's gonna be clamp down versus three evil bugs. Good luck to him. At least then that seems to have like some kind of theme. <laughs> clamp down, uh, such an obscure character. He's relegated to pest control on Cybertron. All right. So moving on to a different toy line. So we got a look at the packaging style for the Velocitron collection. Oh, I'm sorry, the Velocitron Speedia 500 collection. That logo really needed some rethinking. So it's it, the, the computer has it listed as the Velocitron collection. Uh, the Speedia 500 part, I really think, should have been in this empty space underneath the character's name. Uh, just to kind of designate it as like, this is the title of a race, this is the title of the collection. It's just a little bit uh, skewed. But that's minor nitpicking. I think the packaging is beautiful on this thing i love the care i love like how the character art looks on the side uh really like seeing the return of the speedia emblem that's such a cool touch on this uh super appropriate for override as well and yeah the color layout is really nice the box style is really nice i like that actually i'm and i actually really like the return to alternate mode packaging uh i think it looks I know they try to sell the character, but I think it looks way better when you can see the character in art and the vehicle mode that you're getting. Still, yeah, really, really like this. Really, really happy with this. And we also got to see uh, ah, Road Handler in his box art as well. Bit better of a picture. We can get a full look at the top flap as well. Um, I don't know. There's a very Japanese style to this. You know, this is the kind of packaging I see, you know, uh, Japanese figures in a lot more than American ones. So it looks really, really nice to me. And we actually get to see the back of this box. It is very simple. Um, I'm actually kind of disappointed. Like, there's a lot of extra space on here where I feel like, you know, they could have put in some kind of story blurb. You can see in the legal text and all this that they went multilingual in literally every language that they could have so they don't have to print the box once but i don't know i don't know like at least like it feels like at least in some primary languages you could have included a few more like some kind of story blurb so we could actually tell like what the velocitron collection is because at this point it just seems like they're racing in the speedia 500 and you know the the crane truck not known for its racing capabilities would have been nice just to get a little bit of background, especially because you're dealing with Road Hauler here who has some pretty sparse background details considering his weird origins. So it's a little bit uh it's a little bit weird, but still like I'm still like I really, really like how these look. Really like how these look. Alright, so as long as we're talking about leaked packaging, we can go ahead and talk about this leak of Legacy Shockwave. Now, when they saw the, when they had the listing for Legacy Shockwave, I genuinely thought it was just going to be the um, I, I thought it was just going to be like a repack of the Studio Series core class. Um, and and I, actually, I'm, uh, I'm getting the naming wrong here. Uh, yeah, uh, but this core class Shockwave I thought was just going to be a redo of that, and no, it's it's G1 Shockwave in yet another spaceship vehicle mode. So we can avoid having him transform into a gun. This one seems a lot more similar to his Combiner War figure. Especially with the way the legs connect together and transform into the barrel. The front of the ship, rather. Uh, the radar weapon is a little bit weird. Uh, especially just him holding a radar dish. He looks like he's trying to pick... He's really trying to pick up DirecTV and it's just not coming through. Um, I don't mind it so much. I'm trying to figure out where the arms go in this transformation because they, they, I don't, I don't quite see them. Uh, they look, they might just be folded up on the on the shoulders, and then like, you can see the guns on his back get folded over to create the wings. 
So it's it's interesting they keep trying all these different things to get a uh, a vehicle mode for Shockwave. Seems like we're just going to be stuck on spaceship that vaguely looks like a laser gun. But it's a pleasant surprise, is what it is. I was genuinely not expecting a brand new mold for Shockwave at that size this fast. You know, and I am I'm all for that. Like it's it's uh, it's not a bad not a bad looking figure. Um, looking forward to it coming out, and seeing how it turned out. So let's get into some of the weirder things that have been going on. Uh, apparently, if you're in the UK, the Royal Mail is going to debut some official Royal Mail stamps for Transformers at TF Nation 2022, uh, personally approved by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It's weird to know that there's Transformer art that is personally approved of by the queen of england that is such a that's a weird reality to uh to comprehend so uh there's no pictures of these just yet like they said they're going to debut at tf nation 2022 so keep an eye out for coverage of that convention i, I think what's fun about this is that uh, you can see examples of other stunning royal mail uh, special collections here but naturally a transformers collection will of course be dot 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 more than meets the eye. And I don't know if they're just being clever by incorporating the, the catchphrase, or if this actually is going to have some weirdness to it. I Like, are we going to get, like, lenticular stamps? Like, where, where, like, vehicle mode, if you look at it in one direction, robot mode, if you look in the other direction, which would be a, a hilarious way of getting, like, a transforming element into a postage stamp. Okay, so from here on out, if I get fan mail from the UK, it has to be it has to be delivered with these stamps. I know these are collector stamps, and that you really shouldn't be using them to send things in the mail. Uh, doesn't matter. This is fun. <laughs> it's weird, is what it is. But hey, we'll go with it. All right. So something else. Um, something else that came of those really weird. So loot crate, which I didn't even realize was still a thing. I thought they went on. I thought they went under. Uh, apparently this month, or at least until uh, some point in June, they are actually offering a exclusive Transformers Beast Wars t-shirt. The first Beast Wars merch in I don't know how long. I'm not even sure Transformers was at a place in the mid-90s where they could even have like pop culture shirts. Could you go and get like a I don't think you could. Like I don't I don't remember ever like thinking I don't I don't remember ever seeing like transformer shirts when i you know like kid size sometimes like but like i don't ever recall seeing any kind of transformer shirt in the 90s at all because i would have worn one to school every day so the it's 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 fun it's interesting i do wish it was a little bit uh i do wish the artwork choices were a little bit better um like like the beast wars eye uh, and like a like a red shirt with a green Beast Wars eye in the center, and then some character art over it. That would be cool. Uh, something like dedicated to like you know um, like Dinobot. I think would have been a really would have been a really cool one. This is packaging art and a basic logo thrown onto a T-shirt, and they're not even firing in the same direction. What what battle is going on here? Where make it, where uh, uh, Primal and Cheetor are just firing in completely different directions. I don't know. <laughs> Predacons are swarming. They're looking in the same direction, but they're not firing in the same direction. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I think the layout could have been better. I think it could have been. I think it could have been a little bit, uh, a little bit cleaner. But it is super cool that you can actually get just like a beast, an official Beast Wars shirt out of nowhere. Uh, cool to see. Cool to see. Probably picking it up, though I'm like way too many black t-shirts in my collection. I'm making a point to try and get more colorful t-shirts if you haven't noticed, because like I'm just I just realized how many times I just default to a black tee. Uh, it's not it's not the most fashion friendly thing to do. Alright, so speaking of fashion, we have an Optimus Prime dressed up as a Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures figure. When that is obviously not what it is. This is a Smash Changer Optimus Prime that is way too detailed and tech greebled to fit in with a Cyberverse series. But it's a line that retailers will still take. And it's a way to get a toy out that is currently ready to go and they cannot stop it in the production line. So yeah, we've got, uh, we've got a... 
So technically this is part of Dinobots Unite as well. Because that's the subset for Transformers Cyberverse at the moment. So technically, okay, follow me on this. Follow me on this. This is Transformers Bumblebee, Cyberverse Adventures, Dinobots Unite, Smash Changers, Rise of the Beast, Optimus Prime. Good luck to the wiki on this one. That's all I'm saying. So we know the movie was delayed, but that meant that some of the toys were already in production and they had to get released some way. So hey, let's we'll throw them into we'll throw them into Cyberverse packaging and hope for the best. It's a really weird situation and uh i would not be surprised to see this toy again in rise of the beast packaging when it's time for that movie to actually come out and for now this is just consider it a preview run if you will you know i i think this one is uh it's it's it like as a gimmick figure it actually kind of looks fun to be honest with you because i've seen how it works it's just like we're going to be a really bizarre period where we see all these rise of the beasts like gimmick figures coming out as cyberverse toys so it'll be fun ride all right moving on uh we have g-shock back once again producing way overpriced watches based on transformers now i've had people tell me like okay uh there's reasons for why they are so expensive, but you're never going to convince me of them. They just look like they look like digital watches out of the 90s, and nothing convinces me otherwise. Uh, yeah, um, I'm not paying like for like I could like I'm halfway to like a smartwatch for the price that these things cost, if not more. Uh, yeah, but we have one for Bumblebee coming out, one for Megatron, one for Optimus Prime, all 80s themed, and yeah, they definitely look like. Well, they're a little bit more uh, detailed than that, I would say. But, you know, that like that definitely looks like a watch out of the 80s or 90s. You know, so we have that. Um, and then Bumblebee. Bumblebee doesn't get nearly as, like, stylish. It's just kind of round. Like, Bumblebee, like, Optimus kind of got the lion's share of, like, detail and design here. And then, you know, Bumblebee's just kind of round. <laughs> Which I guess fits his aesthetic. And what's what's weird about this is that we are also getting a display stand that is Cybertron based with uh, with G Shock watches built in. So yeah, um, there's price tags on there of thirteen nine of uh, one thousand three hundred ninety yen. I don't know how much I actually believe that. If this is a low, if this is like a low end run of watches, and these genuinely are just like affordable little watches instead of like the super expensive ones they did before that would be very appreciated that would be cool um yeah i, I kind of into the cybertron more than i am the actual watches oh yeah oh yeah i should say yeah it also opens up you can display it on the outside or it opens up to store the watch inside so i guess it can technically keep two watches company uh, yeah, no real like concrete info on them. I you know do not go by these uh, these little price tags that are on them. I do not believe that's going to be the cost. But hey, uh, they are going to be out there. Keep an eye out if you're a watch collector, I guess. And finally, breaking news. This literally just came up a few hours ago. This will tell you this like how uh, how close to the wire I'm running these days. Pluto TV is releasing a Transformers channel for their streaming service. Uh, this is operated by it's internet TV service owned by Paramount. Uh, you know, it's their it's their streaming it's part of their streaming services. It uh, it is free with commercials, so you can actually just download the app and watch. It is debuting June thirteenth. I don't know if it's direct. I don't know if it's like a video on demand. Or if it is like actual, like just a TV channel that runs random Transformer episodes, I'd kind of be down for either if we're going to be completely honest here. Uh, but yeah, you'll have a way of watching new, or uh, you'll have a way of watching uh, a new way of watching old Transformer series Cyberverse, Prime, Robots in Disguise, which I assume is going to be the 2015 series, not the 2001, which is in like a complete legal quagmire. Uh, this is probably also going to include your standards, your G1, your Beast Wars, etc., which, you know, perfectly fine by me. So, more ways of watching the classic Transformers on the way. 
And that's going to do it for this week. Plenty of news, new toys, new streaming services, new stamps. Again, can't stress that enough. New stamps. So thank you once again for uh, following along the week's news with me. Uh, don't, you know, As usual, no idea if I'll do it next week. Depends on what comes up and what else I've got in the works. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. does mean the world to me. And uh, yeah, always more stuff on the way. Keep an eye out. Hope to see you then. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.